Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas week. I don't have to tell you that. I know you're freaking out or you got all your stuff done. Which one is it? I'm kind of in between. Uh, closer to all my stuff done because I delegate. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> uh, Susan Hogan's leaving. You didn't know that? Well, you do now. And it's a blow, I think, to this community in a big way. We shall talk about her career with her and talk about her plans and what's next for her in just moments from now. So don't go anywhere. And then there's this. We have a headline we can run. Oh, there's my bad profile. Mm -hmm. That's a really good picture of you, by the way. Thank you. I don't like <laughs> I don't like the subtitle it's very much. It's weird to see, I know, it's weird to see NBC4 next to my picture. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. You're excited about this professional development, I'm sure. This is, it's huge. And it literally fell in my lap out of, completely out of the blue. And um, I feel ex just incredibly honored to be working for it. This is the number one station down there. It's the station to work for in D.C. Um, it's just, it's a really incredible, life-changing opportunity for my entire family. Fell into your lap how? Well, <laughs> ironically, I just happened to see from a former co colleague of ours who worked here, she had posted on Facebook that she was leaving her TV station in, in Atlanta. And so I wished her well, and I said, where are you heading off to? She said, I'm heading off to D.C. for an interview. And I said, oh, my God, I love D.C. Hopefully I'll be there in a couple of years to join my fiancé and so on and so forth. And I said, good luck to you. Five days later, she texted me, and she said, um, so I didn't get the job in D.C. because it was meant for you. And I said, um, so I called her, and she said, she sat there, and it was, she said, it's a consumer reporting position. Um, she said she was sitting talking to the, to the news director there. He was describing, she said the entire time he was describing me, what, I, what he wanted, what he was looking for. And she said she was sitting there the whole time thinking, this, I need, this isn't my job. This is for Susan. This is exactly what she does. So I, for 24 years I've been here. I don't have a resume. I don't have a, I'm like the last time I applied for a job 24 years ago, I had a resume tape. I don't tape anymore. Yeah, we don't do that. So I'm like, what the heck do I do? So she gave me his email, and I literally the next Monday, that Monday I woke up, sent him off an email, get, cut and paste some links, and off it went. And uh, and within 25 minutes, he responded to my email saying, let's make let's make this work. So this this fits into your. I mean, I don't want to dig deep because it's none mm -hmm. of everybody's business, but. You mentioned your fiance, mm -hmm. so you kind of had an itch to scratch that you might do that anyway. So this right. is kind of serendipity in a lot I know, of ways, and, right? and I'm I'm blessed, and you know I'm a big believer in fate, Dan. And I believe you know somewhere, some you know someone up there just said this is an opportunity, and you need to just go for it. Um, you know, it it was never something that I ever thought I could ever have. Um, you know, it's just you know after spending 24 years in one market. You, and I'm 49 years old, you kind of feel like, oh, I'll just kind of finish out here and who knows, go into public relations or something next. So to have this opportunity, um, I think just speaks volumes for women my age in this industry too, that it's never too late. And uh, when, you know, this is this TV station in and of itself, um, it's owned by NBC Universal and Comcast and um, they share the, the studio and share the building with NBC News. Um, their Washington bureau. So my, when I went down for my interview, Chuck Todd is walking out of the door. I'm like, whoa, it's Chuck Todd, cool. So it's a really pretty neat thing. And uh, the news director basically said to me, um, you threw a monkey wrench, wrench into our whole thing. We were you know, gonna hire somebody and I got your email. And um, so the rest is history. And after two interviews and they flew me back and it was pretty pretty unique well that's so. uh, it's exciting stuff I'm sure people yeah. have very mixed feelings watching this as we speak when we come mm -hmm. back we'll talk about the nature of consumer reporting and what it means to you and how uh, how it all gets done stay with us so Susan Hogan is uh, leaving uh, channel 12 and 64 eyewitness news tomorrow mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad the, the boss said, yeah, go ahead and bring Susan on, because uh, goodbyes in this business are not usually celebrated. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'm not speaking out of school when I say that I was told, sure, when I asked, I'd like to have Susan on, because a couple of decades plus and a half almost mm -hmm. deserve a uh, see ya, you know? Yeah, thank you. They've 
they've been a great employer. My managers have been an amazing team. Um, I've gone through a lot, a lot of different owners and a, different, and a lot of different managers. Um, and the staying power, I think, speaks volumes for a number of different things. It's, the, it's consumer reporting and where it's going. A lot of uh, TV stations 15, 20 years ago were letting go those kinds of franchise reporters. Mm. But this station stuck with it time after time, year after year, from different ownerships to different ownerships because the value in, in the consumer investigative um, in, you know, franchise is huge. Well, and, look, I, I've, yeah. always, I've always mm -hmm. found, just in talking issues, uh, the phones ring on, on talk radio programs and attention's paid to news stories when it affects people in their pocketbook. 100%. So, I mean, it only makes sense. Absolutely. So that's what your work has been all about, that. Their Absolutely. health, their, their money, um, and protecting it. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Consumer advocacy is huge, and I think where what worked for me is I wasn't, I didn't go to Syracuse and study journalism. Everyone just assumed since I went to Syracuse, I went to the Newhouse School of Communications, and I didn't. I was a consumer studies major. So, you know, that was kind of how I was able to get into this whole consumer reporting industries because I wasn't had, didn't have that biased view of being, being a journalist only and then having to learn my craft. My craft came first and I had to learn the journalism second. And I think for, you know, with the call for action volunteers that we have, we have, I have 16 retired folks working in my call for action hotline here answering phone calls. We have about 125 phone calls a week that we average and viewers who are calling us with their problems. And I 125 think 125 weekly average, and that's not including the wow. that's our phone calls. That's not including emails. So I think our station looks at the value of that and says, okay, there obviously is this huge need for it. There's a need for problem solving, and then we also have. I also do the Target 12 consumer investigation. The bigger pieces, like the mausoleum story, mm. um, that actually came to us via uh, the Call for Action Center, the Hotline Center. From a 90-year-old woman. And what are those? What, what does mm -hmm. that that group do? Are they vetting mm -hmm. before you see, or do you penetrate the 125 and take a look yourself? No, they are my front line. Really? Yes, and they. they I take, did not know that. Yes, a lot of people don't. And Call for Action is not exclusive to Channel 12. Call for Action is a nationwide um, nonprofit organization stationed in. They're actually in Bethesda, Maryland, okay. and they work with TV stations throughout the country with this efficacy program and they have the volunteers and they field the phone calls and they work as mediators, advocates, whatever you want to call it. A viewer calls in with a problem, they'll talk to them, make sure that they've already, you know, we want to be the last phone call that you make. You have to make sure that you filed your complaints with the right agency. Then we take those complaints, then they'll call the businesses for them on, on their behalf to try to problem solve, to try to negotiate, to come up with, you know, whatever the resolution may be. And then I'm handed a piece of paper that says that here's the case, here's the viewer's name, and, and what, you know, and if they hit a brick wall, I kind of step in. Um, if they don't, it will say problem solved, and I'll call the two parties, and I'll say, listen, this is my bread and butter, this is what we do, let's, can we do this story, and then, you know, tell everyone else this is what we do here. So that's how it's worked, and they are amazing men and women. They work so hard. They're great. So by the time you decide to get on the horn mm -hmm. and uh, grab a photojournalist and get out there in the community, you pretty much know you got one. Oh, pretty much, yeah. yes. I mean, we, we Whether do. it be an industry trend, because you, you know, you'll give us mm -hmm. industry trend reports and all that kind of stuff, just consumer advice. Those are kind of the easy stuff. The, 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 the digging, once you start digging, you pretty much have sniffed out that you, you got something as a marketable story and someone's right. going to pay. Exactly. They will, at the end of each day, they will come down and we have a discussion and they'll say, okay, well, we got, you know, out of the 53 phone calls that we got, here's six that we feel are worth it. Um, this is what we're working on. And I'll look at it and I'll say, okay, great. And sometimes we will still help the viewer, even if they don't want to go on camera with us. Mm. That's, we're charged to help them regardless. So that doesn't matter. And I'll still make that phone call. Sometimes it's just all it takes. I mean, after 24 years yeah, you're of like getting that, a You're like that you know? attorney commercial in yeah. the, the, the uh, Oh no, Susan, Susan Hogan on the line. We better respond, right? Right. Well, they'll tell me. You know, sometimes they'll come down and say, "Oh, well, we solved this. We just made a phone call and, and it worked." Or the viewer will call and say, "Hey, thanks so much. We just used Susan's name and we got this. You know, got our refund." And I bet you look at situations where if you're mm -hmm. getting 125 calls mm -hmm. a week, you have a trend. Like somebody, something's going wrong out there where multiple 
citizens in the region are affected by the same thing, right? Absolutely. So you'll right. see each other. Oh, this is bubbling up. We got a problem in there, this Exa area. You're, you're yeah. absolutely exactly right. That's we we can see the trends. And so that helps us with our, you know, sweep, with sweep stories, with, you know, what's trending? What are we hearing a lot of, you know, the top 10 complaints? Mm -hmm. um, and no matter what, one of the, always the top, in the top five are contractors and car dealership issues and car repair issues mm -hmm. and health source Rhode Island issues. Those are always up there. So, you know, and it's, it's been a great, great service to the community. And, and, you know, I was the one who basically was told by a news director 14 years ago, uh, we want to start this thing called Call for Action, so yeah, go for it. So When we come back, if it's possible, best moments out of 24 years, stay with us. I'm sure it's an incredibly long list, but uh, out of 24 years worth of work, what do you leave here thinking, man, I'm glad I did that one, or two or three? Oh gosh, there are many, but my number one um, by far is the, the mausoleum story that I did. Um, we were contacted by a 90-year-old woman who called for action and said, my dying wish, she's like, I'm not dying yet, but I know it's coming up, is uh, my, my father is interred in the Roger Williams Mausoleum in Cranston. And it has been abandoned, boarded up, and I want him out. And I want him into a more respectful, there's the exterior, I think. Is that the, I think mm -hmm. that's the steps out in front. Um, and so when I started digging into this and learning about this, this mausoleum was actually a, um, legally declared abandoned by the courts in 2007, 2008. So 527 bodies are inside this building mm -hmm. that is literally crumbling every day. And so I called the city of Cranston and got in touch with uh, Jeffrey Barone, who at the time, he's, he's no longer with the city, but was the constituent affairs um, employee. And he said, well, let's see what we can do. So we met. I mean, I worked on this story for months mm. and sat down with sometimes without even the camera, just talking to these people and uh, saying, you know, what are you going to do? You got, a, you got 527 that they knew of in there, a lot of whom were veterans interred here. The, the building is no longer, is declared abandoned. No one has ownership over it. The last rel person who owned it died and his two sisters died. Um, and there was really, no one really wanted to touch it. So I figured I would. Um, and we used her story and her, the story with her father who was a World War I vet. Impact. Mm -hmm. Big impact. And I guess you've had a career, only got a minute left, uh, nope. uh, of, of impact. Impact is huge, and it's what it's what I'm leaving. And to be able to leave after 24 years, knowing that I had an impact on that, and, and we had the removal. I think so far there's been over 20 bodies removed now because of our story. Um, other stories we've, you know, probably I would say close to a million dollars in refunds that we've been able to get back to viewers over the the course of my 14 years doing call for action, 24 years doing consumer reporting. Um, yeah, I mean the impact is huge, and some laws that were passed, and some legislation that was introduced, and. Yeah, I mean, it's it feels good and um, carry on a, hopefully a good legacy, whomever is going to take over. Yeah, well, cl clearly the, you've established a franchise that has to continue. Yes. Uh, you're a pro's pro. Thank you, Dan. We wish you the best of luck, and I would imagine that anyone trying to get away with anything in Washington, <laughs> I'm not talking about the White House or the <laughs> Capitol, but you never know. You never know. You never That's right. know. Bum, 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 bum. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate it. Great success. Final word and we come back, stay with us. You know, there's some jobs in all fields and even in this field of broadcasting that anybody could do and it's no big deal. And then there are some professionals that carve out a niche where their signature is exclusive and unique and Susan Hogan's is certainly one of them. She'll be missed, she'll have to be replaced because no one's irreplaceable in anything they do. But the impact is always felt. We wish her the best of luck. I'm sure you do, too. We'll see you on the radio tomorrow at noon on WPRO and back here tomorrow night on My State of Mind. Thanks so much for watching.